to meet you. Are you going to get a chance to wander around the, the floor? I sure hope so, yeah. What kinds of things, you know, uh, projects, uh, inventions, creations, yeah. what, what are you looking yeah. for down here today? Yeah. Some of the things that I'm most interested in are applications that tap into behavior change. How can we get devices that are ubiquitous, that are connected, that are platforms, to help us do what we want to do, right? So we just saw Cochrane review around smoking cessation and found that, it, that having text, simple text messages doubles the chance of quitting smoking successfully. That's like pharmaceutical level improvements. So I'm interested in seeing more applications that tap into behavior change, understanding humans with all of our foibles and all of our irrationality, in some ways predictable irrationality, and help us, with the help of these devices, bind ourselves to the mast or you know, use our, 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 our own desires and our social networks and our competitiveness and all the other things to get us to help ourselves do the right thing. So behavior change is, is something I'm, I'm very interested in looking for. The second thing I'm looking for are particular application startups that tie into new models of payment and delivery. So if you have bundled payments for orthopedic operations, now all of a sudden, functional status monitoring in the post-op period becomes really important. So how are those startups and entrepreneurs and innovators thinking about plugging into new payment and delivery models and delivering the innovations that we need to succeed. How, a lot of this is patient-centered, a lot of what you've been talking yeah. about. How are you going to get the physician to get more involved in maintaining a, a, health, a health management program for his or her patients? Well, I, I think first of all, it, they can't go broke doing it, right? So if, it's un, if all of this is totally uncompensated for the, for the provider, if keeping the patient healthier doesn't make a difference, if they just have to put more in and get nothing out, that's not going to work. So in isolation, that will never work. Technology alone would not solve the problem. But what's so exciting is that we are seeing, whether it's patient-centered medical homes, pay for performance, bundle payments, accountable care, med, you know, there's a host of new payment and delivery models where now the provider, if they spend that extra time and effort and integration to help their patients stay healthy, stay out of the hospital, stay out of trouble, communicate with them, then they get to uh, recoup some of those savings that the, the health plans, the purchasers, and everybody else is, is getting. So that's, uh, that's what I'm, I'm really excited, is that we're changing the paradigm, right? Where health is actually something that's going to help you make money, uh, as opposed to disease is what makes you money. A lot of this is built around health information exchange and the large integrated networks. Do you think this is going to mean the end of the small provider, one or two uh, doctor practice? I, I think that there are uh, forces that go towards uh, more coordination and more integration. Uh, the question is, can we get information integration and workflow integration without necessarily having financial integration? And that's our hope, is that we can get really the democratization of information and information exchange and information technology uh, so that a small rural practice in rural Wisconsin uh, can uh, be able to have the tools that the most advanced uh, clinic in, in, in our urban centers have.